We're here at SEMA 2022 to check out some of the best builds from all around the country. From souped up muscle cars, supercars to pickup trucks, there is everything here at SEMA this year and we can't wait to see what's inside. I'm Gabrielle. And I'm Emily. And this is SEMA 2022. Welcome. Can you tell us a little bit about your car today? It's a 2019 Cheetah Evolution, which is a replica of the original Cheetahs. The original Cheetahs were made in 63 through 65. They were made to compete with the Cobras. And they did well as far as competing with the Cobras. It had a GM driveline in it, Chevrolet GM driveline. Uh, that's what this one has. I tried to replicate some of those things, and that's why the engine looks like it does. It's the nostalgic look. Can we go ahead and take a look at the sure. engine? So about how much power does something like this make? I imagine it's pretty lightweight. It's 2,340 pounds and made 709 horsepower. Oh, wow. So how does it feel to drive? It's scary. I'm scared of it. <laughs> so you love it? I love it. How long have you owned it for? Uh, about three years. So In 1963, when I first saw a Cheetah in the Hot Rod magazine, that's when I knew I wanted to get one. And three years ago, I got it. It's all titled and licensed. It's got a VIN. B -I -N. It's legal to drive on the street. Have you taken it to the track or anything crazy like that? I took it to a road race track. I'm not a road race driver, but I drove it and I had fun with it. Awesome. It's neat. It's really cool. I've, I've actually never seen one in person. How many of these do you think they made? They made 23 of these cars. This is number 13, lucky 13. I love it. Thank you so much for sharing it with us today. In the past few years, the character schemes for cars has become even more popular, especially among the tuner car scene, but it's not all that often that you see a hot rod with a character theme. Check out this Joker hot rod build. here with the coolest innovative paint booth product that you can get, especially if you're someone who doesn't have room for an entire paint booth. Can you tell us a little bit about your products today? This is a 23 by 15 made by Mobile Environmental Solutions. It gets about approximately 45 air exchanges an hour, sets up in less than 10 minutes. And then when you're done painting, it's a cross flow positive pressure paint booth. When you're done painting, you roll up, put it in the corner and get your real estate back. I love it. And when you roll it up, about how much space does it take up? Like, is it easy to transport? It's really easy to transport. You can roll it up short and fat, or you can roll it up long and skinny. Usually it's going to be about 36 to 48 inches wide and about 60 inches long. Wow, that's perfect, especially if you just have a corner of your garage to store it in. Do you mind if we take a look inside? Absolutely. Now, what type of ventilation can you expect from this? It's all positive pressure. So imagine this being like a big balloon. Once you air it up, once we close the door and you seal it up, and it's a cross flow. So all these six by six inlets are bringing in the makeup air. They're bringing the air across the booth and to where it goes through here through the exhaust filters. That's very cool. Thank you for sharing it with us today. One of the coolest things about coming to SEMA isn't just about the custom cars you'll see here, but rather all of the technological advances that you'll see in the automotive industry in the coming years. Now, some of this is just concept and some of this is products that you can actually buy as an at-home consumer or garage builder yourself. You'll see a lot of these brands and products on some of the cars coming straight to you from brands like Toyota and Dodge, but you'll also see a lot of these brands in the aftermarket sphere. The best part of these cars is even if they do end up as concepts, these concepts are used to advance everything in the automotive space, which means we learn and adapt, especially in an age where internal combustion engines are becoming less and less popular. As we move into an era where 
internal combustion engines become less popular and we're looking more towards hybrid engines and electric engines, it's important to keep working forward to have all of this new tech kind of worked out before it hits the consumer lots. Otherwise you end up with a ton of problems and issues because the products haven't been tested. The cool thing about SEMA is a lot of those products are getting tested on the cars right now before they even hit the automotive market. So being here, you get to see things that maybe won't actually be on cars for the next decade, but they're being used and tested as we speak. As internal combustion engines are becoming less and less popular, we started to see a thing called electromods or completely electric modified cars. Like this Cobra kit behind me, you would typically expect to see some type of internal combustion engine in, but it is 100% electric. Come check it out. Can you tell us about how this machine differs from your standard CNC machine? So I think the first thing that makes it different is the fact that it still retains all its manual capability, right? So like if I if I can switch spots with you and work better. So if I go to DRO mode, it is now a manual machine. See that? So I can make stuff by hand in here. But as far as the CNC part goes, it realistically is just speaking English and asking me geometry questions. So most CNC works from G-code. G-code you have to know and you have to use a programming source to make all that, right? And here you can program right at the control. I told it I've got five holes to make around an inch and a quarter radius. And the first hole is 45 degrees from zero. Right? If I look at the next page, I've got a circular pocket. Where's the middle of the pocket? How deep am I gonna cut it? How big is it going to be? So all I have to do is answer the questions that are on your print and then it creates the part automatically from that, right? So it's made to be simple enough that you can make a program usually in less than 10 minutes and be cutting that part and have it in, in less than an hour. So this is probably a lot easier for people to use because you don't have to sit there and learn all the software, but is there a way to store the cut in your system? Say like I wanted to do the cut and a week later, I need to make a slight adjustment to it. Yep, absolutely. So if I hit this mode key, that's like a menu key. See where it says program in and out? You would store all the programs in here. Now in this case, there's only one program in there, the one I'm using for the show, right? But I, if I just put anything else in there, instead of hitting that, I would just hit save. And then I would add it in there. And you can name the programs anything you want, and then they'll either stay there, or you can use a network, save them right on a network, or on a USB stick, any of those things. Awesome, what type of materials can you mill with it? Really anything, anything from aluminum to an Inconel. It doesn't really matter. But you know, most people is like in your industry, you know, most of that stuff's gonna be softer metals like aluminum yep. or or you know, probably some tool steels like 1018. But you know, in aerospace they're always cutting Inconel and really hard to machine materials. And then when you're in the medical, everything is stainless, right? Yep. So it can cut anything. It's just what you needed to do today. That's very cool. Thank you for sharing it with us. We're here at the SEMA 2022 Battle of the Builders. Battle of the Builders started in May where entrants were able to submit their applications, show pictures of the car, but now we're down to the really nitty gritty of the builds. So yesterday we started the narrow down of the process. Have you seen any really cool builds this week that you've been uh, really interested in? I'm really looking forward to seeing the GT40 as well as the full build Scion FRS. Oh yeah, I saw the sign off for us. There is a ton of really weird builds here. I mean, we have everything from supercars to hot rods. We even have some electro mods this year, which I think is pretty wild. And it speaks to the state of the automotive industry that we're starting to see electro mods at an event like SEMA for builds. But also it's, it's cool to see the aftermarket for electric cars coming out. What do you think? 
Having an electric old-fashioned Cobra was very interesting to see. Not something I expected to see at SEMA, but they seem to have everything here. I think it, it really gives us some insight into what we can look forward to. I mean, a lot of people have been nervous about the state of electric cars, but I, I feel like if we're going to do electric, why not make it badass electric cars? Oh yes, 100% yes. In the next few days, Battle of the Builders will be narrowed down until Friday when the official winner of Battle of the Builders is announced. And honestly, I'm not sure who's going to win, so you'll have to stay tuned. We're here with what could be one of the coolest electrified vehicles here at SEMA today, and there's so much to learn about it. Can you tell us how you got started with electrifying cars? Yeah, so basically like we started with racing ICE cars and we just kept having problems with engines, transmissions. We're like, there's gotta be a better solution to actually race and set up car and not have so many problems with engines and such. So we're like, why don't we build an electric car? Like that's kind of where this all started. And then we picked the GR86 chassis because it's like, it's light, it's nimble. There's aftermarket support for it. It's just a no-brainer to use this chassis. Did adding the electrical components add any weight to the vehicle? So the factory car weighs 2,800 pounds right off the showroom floor. This car weighs 3,000 pounds. So it only added 200 pounds more. Yeah, that's not bad. And I see that you guys were able to distribute the weight a little bit too from the front to the back. Does that help the driving at all? Absolutely. So the target weight for this was 45% front, 55 rear. So it acts like a mid-engine sports car. Can you give us a rundown on everything that's going on with the electrical system? Like yeah. how much power can we expect out of it? So right now we have the car tuned for 330 horsepower, 350 foot-pounds of torque. The motor is capable of doing 500 horsepower, 500 foot-pounds, but right now we have the inverter limiting it to that. So up front, it's an AC chilled system that cools the battery um, with an 800 volt compressor. The battery is an 800 volt system. Um, and in the back, we have a dry sump oil system for cooling the, uh, the motor and for oiling the motor too. Has it been as reliable as you hoped it was leaving internal combustion engines behind? So we haven't track tested it yet. It goes from here to PRI, then to Olin's to shake it on their shaker rig to develop the suspension, which I can't wait to see. They're going to shake the crap out of this thing. I heard you guys have an insane, like top of the line, fire suppressive and safety system on this thing too. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so we work really closely with Lifeline and they're the ones that work with all the big names like Formula E. And we wanted to do an industry first. We wanted the fire suppression system to be plumbed through the battery pack. So nobody's ever done this before. It just made sense for us. It's like battery safety is the biggest concern with EV vehicles. So like, why don't we take it the next level up, plumb it through the, plumb it through the battery. It won't stop a thermal runaway, but it gives the driver more time to get out. It makes it safer just for everybody, for the marshals, the track. It's just a no brainer when we came up with it. Do you think this is something that the automotive industry is going to kind of follow in your footsteps about? Because I feel like when you talk to people about electric vehicles, that's the number one thing you hear is their fear of their battery catching on fire. And if you come up with a solution, I feel like you could see a lot of automotive manufacturers kind of tiptoeing after that. Yeah, absolutely. When we talk to track owners and we're working very closely with NASA, their biggest concern was like, yeah, well, there's no safety around a battery. If it catches fire, it'll burn for a week. And the track, one track we talked to, they're like, yeah, if you have a Tesla or a Mach-E, you had to sign a waiver that we can put a forklift through your car and dunk it in a swimming pool if it catches fire. So it's like, that's not really a good approach. We want to wheel to wheel race this thing, but you can't. You can take your Tesla through some lapping days, some time attack, but you can't like rub doors with somebody in any series. So we're like, we want to change that. And that's why we came up with all the safety in this car. So this is a, a full-fledged bona fide electric race car. Oh yeah. So you mentioned Formula E. Is there anything outside of Formula E that you guys can do that's just electric or will you be competing against other ICE cars? So we'll be competing against ICE cars. The series we're running in is the NASA Super Touring Series. Uh, we targeted it for an ST2. So that'll be racing against like Corvettes, Mustangs, uh, Porsche GT4s. Like that's kind of the power to weight ratio that we targeted. And yeah, we took all of the rules that FIA made for the Formula E and applied it to this car so that we know it's safe. This Formula E is a great series. It's been around for a while. So like they're doing it, we took all of the safety from there and applied it to this car. Do you think as electric cars become more modified and more popular in the public eye. Do you think Formula E will ever be as big as Formula One? I think it will. 
basically because, I mean, there's no getting around the torque of an electric motor. You just can't get around it. The only thing that an ICE engine has over an EV is the sound. Like, I'll be the first to admit it, a V8 sounds way better than an electric car. But I mean, our gearbox is straight cut gears. So you'll hear this thing. It will scream around the track. It's not going to be quiet. That's pretty cool. Do you mind if we take a look inside? Absolutely. Emily and I'm here with Benpack today so tell us about your booth. Hey I'm Dave with Benpack and uh, about our booth well here at SEMA we've got a bunch of stuff going on right now we've got triple stacking lifts we've got our auto stacker out we've got max jacks we've got quick jack we've got a brand new uh, to Benpack uh, tandem uh, double independent platform lift the PL12000 making its, its debut here um, it's just a phenomenal show for us so far and we're very happy to have a bunch of brand new products out like the Ergo Chair Series. Um, it's just very cool right now because we've got brand new products debuting, new product lines debuting. Benpack has been really expanding product lines over the last few years. Cool Boss Evaporative Air Coolers, again, that Ergo Chair line of uh, creepers and seats, uh, shop work seats and uh, solutions. And just new lifts. The 10 AP series of two post lifts are absolutely fantastic. It is a next generation two post lift with features that have just not been seen in two post lifts before. New locking systems, new styles of arms, uh, no more need for having to choose between asymmetric or symmetric posts. Just everything that you can imagine in, in lifts, we've got here for the SEMA show at the booth. So it's just awesome. It's been a great show so far. Still got a couple days left and uh, happy to be here. Very well. Which one seems to be the eye catcher for SEMA so far? The eye catcher, uh, that's a toss up. Um, Quick Jack is always a hugely popular product just because it's so versatile. Uh, so Quick Jack is a really big eye catcher. And then the other one has to be this uh, this PL12000 over here, this, this brand new design for us. It hasn't been released yet. This is actually the first time it's been seen in public. Uh, this is our, our first time having it out. And it's a really cool design, brand new design from us and, and people have been loving it. So. Very cool. Awesome. Well, thank you for your time. Absolutely. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. We're here at SEMA with Rohano Wheels, and behind me is the coolest collection of wheels for supercars. We've got some Lamborghinis out in front of us, but also trucks. So what are your favorite wheels here on the wall, and can you tell us about some of your best sellers? Yeah, um, my personal favorites, I'm into like muscle cars. So a lot of things that we have for muscle cars is the RFX series, pretty much here on forward. Um, the best seller definitely are RFX 11, and I love that we offer these three finishes. And this is kind of a great identifier of what kind of wheels we do with this brushed uh, bronze and brushed titanium. That's definitely something I don't see because usually people just do regular silver or just a bronze and adding that touch of brush just gives it a nice detail. Yeah, absolutely. You can tell that they're high quality wheels just by the finish alone. I, I actually really like the gloss black ones, but which one's your personal favorite? Uh, my personal favorite? Currently, our, our newest release, which is right over here, 
RFX 17. These look like a pain to clean. I could just imagine yeah. like sitting crisscross applesauce in front of my car, like crying with a little detail brush for the next six hours of my life. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But I think the complexity gives it that touch, you know, like details that you can match with the rest of your car. Yeah, absolutely. This is definitely show car quality. I could I could see myself drooling over these on, on the right vehicle. So can we take a look at some of the cars? Yeah, so here we have our main booth car. It's a Lamborghini Aventador with a SVR kit. Um, the whole kit was installed by Creative Bespoke. Now, if someone was looking to get something custom, especially on a set of three-piece wheels, is that something that they can do with you guys? Yeah, yeah, we can literally do anything, any customization options, different style lips, different style faces. Um, you can show your hardware, you can hide it, you can choose your width, your offset. It goes on and on. Um, yeah, even adding carbon fiber, even up to full carbon fiber barrels. Yeah, no, this is actually one of my favorites. It's actually a new release. It's our RFT26. Um, you don't get as much slip having a full carbon fiber barrel, but in my opinion, that's cool because I'm a big fan of performance, mm -hmm. definitely. So I don't care if there's like not enough lips to show because I know that this wheel is super strong, super light, and it definitely breaks some necks. And I'm guessing also one of the more lightweight options. Yeah, it's definitely our lightest, second to probably our monoblock single piece forged wheels. Can you get a carbon front to match it? We can do carbon fiber overlay on the face. Oh, what is the smallest size that you guys make? Uh, we offer starting from 19 inch, okay. um, but we have been known to do 18 inch. Like I said, they're fully custom, so someone really wants to do it, we, we can make it happen. Uh, they're stunning. Thank you for showing them to us today. We're here with one of the most iconic cars in Mercedes-Benz history, the Mercedes 300 SL, the baby brother to the Gullwing. One thing that this has in common with the Gullwings is you will see the iconic Gullwing doors. What sets it apart from anything like a Lamborghini would be the fact that the Gullwing doors attach at the roof line, which is one of the only characteristics that sets it apart from other doors. However, this one is a complete VIP build with a custom interior, custom luggage set, and it even comes with a bottle of whiskey. Check it out. Out of all of the builds that you've seen here so far, what have been your favorite? Ooh, what would be my favorite build that I've seen here so far at SEMA? That would be such a great question if I'd actually had the time to walk around and look at anything, girl! I don't think I don't think I've covered like a quarter of what there is here at SEMA and every time I go past an area, I'm like, how did I miss that car? How did I miss that car? And it's just going to be an endless thing. And I feel like over social media and videos the next few weeks is just gonna be being I, I didn't even see that car there. I didn't know you were there, so. It's like end of day, day one, you get back to your ho hotel room, you know, you're exhausted, you're tired. I like flip up my phone, like, all right, I'm just gonna scroll through, see like what I captured for the day. Literally two pictures of cars. Yep. I took two pictures of cars yesterday. That yep. was my SEMA 2022 experience, day one. Yep. <laughs> it's just running around frantically seeing how many cars I can almost touch. I've actually met some really cool builders that have let me like get in their car and like get in-depth interviews too. I've been really excited about that. So, What's your favorite car? Uh, um, I, so I like very small, weird niche cars and I saw a Cheetah replica outside oh. and I thought that was really cool. I'm really excited to go see the mid-engine Mustang that Via for Build has been doing. I've been following that build for a while. Uh, God, I don't know. There, there's so many different types of builds. Like I feel like I've been to a lot of car shows that cover like truck builds, classic car builds, JDM builds, supercar builds, and this is everything and it's like I didn't know I could want this many vehicles, and this is going to be a really toxic relationship for me here at SEMA. All the things. 
take them all home. It's actually good that you can't buy anything here. I know, but I, I got everyone's contact information, so I'm like, oh, I can't. Which is almost as dangerous. <laughs> I think it's worse at this point. Yeah. But th there's so many parts that I didn't know that I could buy. I know, you know. You're empowered with that. It's going to be such a bad time for me when I get home. It's almost Christmas. That's all I'm saying. Just the perfect time to open up a new credit card. <laughs> Awesome. So thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us today. We are here with the coolest automotive diecast cars that you can get on the market as an enthusiast. I mean, these cars are incredibly detailed, high quality. What do you think? Oh, you're preaching to the choir, so <laughs> you're not going to get any no's from me on this one. Thank you. Yeah. So are these vehicles based off of actual SEMA builds, or do you kind of go through the entire rendition process yourself and decide how you want it to look? Yeah, these are, are our designs and stuff. Um, actually, our, our designer, uh, DeGiro, did these. Uh, he did this one. I design all the cars, all the uh, tooling samples and everything and stuff, and I guide these guys, the, the artists that work under me. I have a couple guys under me, and uh, we just kind of figure out what we want to do. We kind of wanted to go kind of the 80s style truck, you know, uh, or late 80s, early 90s style, but these trucks were brand new and everything. So, and we work with Steve and Dan, our, um, uh, they're fun lines, they're our distributors. So they're, they, they're the guys at this booth, we're here for support, they're the ones selling them. And so we kind of give them some choices, what they want to do, and we work closely with them. And this is the, the color scheme that they wanted and everything and stuff. So it's kind of reminiscent of something that could be here at SEMA, not necessarily an actual build. Once you start doing something actual, then there's lots of other things. That Licensing we've, and you know, yeah, stuff. we've done that when we did our swear body stuff. We worked with uh, the swear body syndicate guys yep. out in uh, Arizona. We actually scanned their vehicle uh, SS01, the the blue and white vehicle. So we scanned that 3D, and um, we came out with the, the their their trucks and everything. And you know, it's kind of, it's kind of like one of those pet projects. You yeah. know, it takes longer because you got so many people involved to sign off on and everything. But at the end, it's worth it and stuff. So it's just one of those things. You know, it's, it's you know, this one was a little easier because it was just more internal yeah. and stuff and everything. But the other projects are fun. Of all the projects that you guys currently have here, which one is your personal favorite? You know, I've been doing this 18 years, so I always get that question. And there's like a, a quote from Carol Shelby. My favorite one's basically the next one. You know, the I, there's one, some yeah. cars I like, but I'm I'm jazzed up about the next one I'm working on, and you know, just want to kick everybody else's in diecast butt. You know. Can you give us a hint what the next one's gonna be? Just a hint. All right. Well, there's always more than one. I could sh I could show you some stuff that's not out yet. We've shown a few things. So this is a tooling sample. So this is a. Uh, a Chevy crew cab dually, so it's got the four doors and it's got the dually bed, so it's got the four four tires, two tires on each side. And this one is the what the, this one's the four-wheel drive chassis. So it's raised up, it's got the bigger tires and everything. So there's like three of the, what's kind of cool, there's only three of these in the US right now. I have one back home, and this is the stock height. And I also have a lowered height one <laughs> at home. I don't want to show pictures of that one. But this is brand new. This is testing the mold out. So the comp, the factory, they check out all the imperfections or if there's anything that might come up later, they'll, they'll, they'll clean and debug the mold and everything. So this is the testing stage. This is it. So this is what it's going to come out to. This I don't even have- you make sure you don't see tooling marks. Oh yeah. Or anything catastrophic, you know, like any kind of little ding or burr or anything mm -hmm. and stuff. So we, this is, um, I don't even have paint samples of these guys. This is it. I mean, this is- Nothing. This is just raw die cast. Um, it might have a little, little bit of a protective clear coat, but uh, might not. So they'll they'll change over time. But this is just checking out the mold and everything and stuff. So this is this is the fun stuff, you know. So this is stuff that doesn't really that doesn't get out of the, our, uh, our our uh, offices and stuff. So just I get to play with this stuff. 
What's, what we like to do, if you notice on other die casts, see the screw right here? Uh, sometimes they have two screws. Mm -hmm. You could get a Phillips screwdriver and take our car apart. Some of the other guys, they, they rivet them in, so you have to drill them and uh, take them apart. And it's a little, it's harder, yeah. you know, and stuff. This, you know, it's, just, it's a basic screwdriver. So people can go in and customize this. They don't like those rims, switch out the rims. Some guys don't like how low they are. They'll switch out a chassis to put a four by four or a stock chassis. What, as long as you buy it, do whatever you want to and have fun, knock yourself out. Are those, I love it. Where can people buy it if they're not here at SEMA or are seeing this later and want to order one online? Yeah, um, Walmart's our biggest um, uh, vendor. So Walmart's all across the US and Canada. Uh, we're in Hobby Lobby and some other stores. Um, check our website. We have a place where to buy. We don't sell directly uh, to the public, but we have distributors such as Funlines here that have the booth for SEMA. But uh, go to our website, uh, www.machines.com. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing this with me today. This is this is super cool. Awesome. Thank you. It's Christmas. Halloween is over. It's Christmas now. Kayla, the car girl on YouTube. I am a professional driver. I do a lot of stunts for movies. I'll be working on something coming out soon next week. It's coming out next week, so we can expect to see it. Well, it's coming out at the end of the year, but uh, I'm sure you guys heard of Beverly Hills Cop. We're doing number four. Eddie Murphy's back. Yes, that sounds so excited. And I'm guessing they could check out a trailer for that on your YouTube channel over on your page. Um, probably later in the year, you know, I got to wait on that, you know, you got to sign some legal stuff. Awesome. Okay. So you said this is your first SEMA. What do you think of it so far? It is my first SEMA. I'm usually out and about either in a car, working on a movie, you know, um, I like it. I like the people, the enthusiasm. There's a lot of passion, whether you just love cars or doing a build or like racing, there is something here for everyone. Absolutely. I got to meet Richard Petty. Oh my God, the racing legend, the king. There's so many people walking around just casually. I pass by and I'm like, oh my God, I've seen you on TV. Oh my God, I followed you for years. It's like wild. And you get to know them and they're just actually really genuine car enthusiasts and people. It's been really exciting to meet a lot of people that I've like idolized growing up. What's your favorite car? Here today or in general? I want both. I want in general and I want here today. Here today is really hard. I've seen a lot of cars that I think have changed my opinion. I've seen a lot of electro mods that have changed my opinion, definitely on electric vehicles. Um, I've, I've seen some really insane overlanding builds. Um, God, I, don't, I don't even think I could, I wouldn't know where to start. I'd have to categorize favorites by haul and then break it down into category. I would, well, we got the RWB. It's my friend Mark's car over here. And then um, there's a really amazing build. Um, the guy's been welding for 25 years, I think he said. It's in 22300. It's called Excalibur. You have to check that out. It's incredible. Just, I'm also a certified welder. So that car he built from the ground up and he also races. You have to check that out. There are there are some really cool EV stuff here too, though. There's so. a lot. There's so much. I feel like I could walk the halls for the next three weeks and still find cars that I haven't seen yet. I've been here for three days and I still haven't finished seeing this haul. So good luck if you're only here for one day on that. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much for talking to us today. Yeah. Awesome. I'm Kayla Delahunt and I'm here with Turner Motorsport and Liqui Molly. See you guys later. Timo with Liqui Molly. Can you tell us about some of your products today? But you can't talk about your engine oil for a challenge. Okay, uh, brake fluid. 
Brake fluid, okay. So what can we expect from Liquid Mala Brake Fluid? Uh, it's gonna help you brake and stop. Just like the non, the lubricants uh, help your engines. So besides engine oil and brake fluid, what are some lesser known products that you guys make? Maybe some niche products, maybe something that people aren't aware that they can buy from Liquid Molly. Um, I would say a lot of the additives. Um, a lot of people don't realize that we sell just additives as well that you can put in pretty much any motor oil. It's designed to use with, our, with ours, but you don't necessarily have to use all Liquid Molly stuff. We would like you to, don't get me wrong. I would love for you to use all Liquid Molly stuff, but you never know. Can you show us some of your favorite products today? Um, let's see. There's some new stuff that I've never actually used. I've actually got a whole palette of stuff coming. Um, the par uh, brakes parts cleaner, that's some of my favorite. I mean, everybody loves brake parts cleaner. You have to use that. I, I buy this by the case. I use it for everything. You can use this not for brakes. Pretty much anything, nothing painted, Absolutely. nothing went in epoxy you can sealing. Just use it and just Clean all the grease up your as long, yeah, as long as you don't like your hands. <laughs> don't spray this on your skin. Don't spray this on painted or epoxy surfaces. What else do we have up here? Um, I would brakes. say all the gear fluid, um, gear oils and stuff like that. Um, I had a very, very loud transmission in my 350Z. It's a supercharged, Vortex supercharged 350Z. And not going to mention the name of the uh, product that we used, but it was very, very loud and it was very clunky and it grinded. Swapped to Liquid Wally. The recommended stuff for Liquid Molly with some of the additives, perfectly fine. No issues. I don't know if the younger enthusiasts have gotten to the stage where they realize how important quality oil is, but there's something over here that caught my eyes. I didn't know that Liquid Molly made any type of car care products, but I see leather care and interior cleaner over here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's some of the newer products because when I got in touch with Liquid Molly, when I first started working with Liquid Molly, I had a Tesla. I mean, I still had other cars, but I was in a Tesla. And I was like, well, what can we work together on? And that's when I found out it's car care products as well. So it's and everything. It's all everything. liquids, all, all automotive liquids. Yeah, all yeah. automotive liquids. Anyway, thank you for talking with us it's today. Free. What's up guys, my name is Emily. I'm here with Brian at Pennzoil's booth. He is also a part of Top Break Imports. Yep. So tell us more about your company. Yeah, so uh, we specialize in importing uh, like classic sports cars, I could say, mostly uh, like GTRs, Supras, NSXs, all of the fun, cool Japanese stuff. You recently just went to Japan. Was that yep. What was yeah. that for? How'd it uh, go? I got back on Monday and came immediately here. So it's been a long trip. Uh, but it was great. We got to drive some R34 GTRs all around the countryside. Myself, my friend Dustin, Mickey, and uh, TJ. So it was really cool to have that experience of driving cars. We went to Fuji Speedway for ours day and uh, got on a plane, came straight here to SEMA where we're at the Pennzoil booth, which is also filled with lots of cool uh, Japanese, Italian, and American cars. Yeah, they got a little so, bit of everything. A little bit of everything, yeah. yeah. So uh, behind us is my favorite of the Pennzoil cars. Uh, it's Chelsea Denofa's RTR uh, Ford Mustang, and uh, actually just earlier today I went for a like uh, ride along drift session with uh, him in this, which was really crazy. Uh, we did a tandem with another car through the parking lot, and okay. a trophy truck jumped over the top of us, oh, which was fun. pretty wild. Yeah, yeah, that's a little so, wild. Yeah, uh, Formula D season is over, but this car is on display, and uh, it'll be back on the track next year. It's really fast. Yeah. Have you ever been in a drift car? I've been in drift cars, but not a formula drift car. Not in a formula drift car? No. Well, I highly recommend. Maybe we should try to get you a ride along, but uh, I'm is, always down wild. to drift. It's wild, yeah, so. Yeah, fair enough. Well, thank you for your time. Absolutely, thank you.
Mm-hmm.